right here are going to be the most important. Yeah, these three will be the most important that you're going to be using here in this in these first couple sections. Um, yes, you use some of these down here, but these will be more the most important up here. And don't worry, you will be given this chart, this table for every quiz and test. Yeah. So you don't have to, I mean, it'll help you to know it. It'll help you know, you because when you're doing your homework. I have to memorize this anyway. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Bobby it's says it's stupid. So we're going with Bobby. You guys need to memorize no. all this now. No. Okay. Bobby should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's just all memorize it. Come on, guys. Well, you can't, you can't actually memorize these. Okay, these down here are a little different. You really don't use these as much, so that's why I'm not going to put as much emphasis. Yes, you will use them, but these are the most important. Now you have a sine squared u plus a cosine, cosine squared u equals one. Where in the world does that come from? Well, if you are on your unit circle, you have a radius of one. And if you remember your equation for the unit circle, if it's centered at zero, zero, this is your equation for your unit circle. Right, x squared plus y squared equals one radius of one, and it's not shifted left or right, so you don't have like an x minus two quantity squared, or x plus three quantity squared. So you don't have that. So this is your equation for your unit circle. Well, we know that in 7x, we can take an x out, and we can plug in, well, what is equivalent to x? Is your sine or your cosine? Cosine. Cosine. So we could say this is a cosine of u quantity squared. We can take out a y and we can plug in a sine of u, square it, and set that equal to 1. <clears throat> now, keep in mind, the cosine of u, those are not two separate entities. You can't just have a cosine, it's not like a cosine times a u. All right? The cosine of u go together. If you take a cosine of something, you have to take a cosine of something after it. What some people like to do is they like to look at this as um, like a, a cosine times a u, but that's not true. Okay, this is the cosine, it's all one function. It's all one function. It's kind of like f of x, it, and even though it's notation in this all one function, you can't, this is not f times x, right? So when you have something squared, if you have a 2 on the outside of your parentheses, oh. what that means is you actually can rewrite it as a cosine squared u. Alright. Yeah, not an h. Just got that one. Yep. So if you have something outside your parentheses like this, you're actually squaring the function. You don't want to put the 2 behind the u. Okay, you put the square behind the sine and behind the cosine, or behind the cosecant or secant. Because if you write it like this, this right here is different than this. Here your whole function is squared, but here this is a cosine of u squared. So if you had like the cosine of, we'll call u uh, pi over 4. Well, pi over 4 squared, that's not the same thing as finding the cosine of, that's not the same thing. Okay, here you'd be squaring like your pi over 4. Here you're squaring the entire function. Okay, so don't get confused. That's, make sure you know that those are two different things. Uh, so now, doesn't this look just like what we have up here? Right, your sine and cosine switch around, but that is how this first identity is derived. It's derived from your unit circle. Now this is a very, very, very important equation to use because you may have to solve this equation for sine squared u which means subtract the cosine squared u to both sides, and you have a one minus cosine squared u. And you may have to use that for substitution somewhere. Okay, you may have to solve this for a cosine squared u minus one, which would be equal to a negative sine squared u. So it is an equation, but it can be used for substitution. <coughs> now, these other two equations, you may not know right off the top of your head, but I'm gonna show you the easiest way to remember them. Do you remember how? If I take this equation right here, and say I just want to, well, I'm going to divide by cosine squared u 
Divide this by a cosine squared u. Divide that by a cosine squared u. <coughs> well, what is, what's a cosine divided by a cosine? Just a one. What's a sine squared u over a cosine squared u? That's a y over x, which is y over x, which is a tangent squared u, and a one over cosine. That's a reciprocal. So one over cosine is a secant squared u, right? Oh, 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 right here. That's your second equation, right? That's your second equation. So if that's your second equation, and you got that by dividing everything by cosine squared u, how do you think you could find your third equation? Dividing by sine squared u. Exactly. So if you know your very first equation, the sine squared u plus cosine squared u equals 1, you can find the other two by just either dividing everything by sine squared u or dividing everything by cosine squared u. All right? So you have those three equations, and somebody, <laughs> <laughs> But you can find the other two relatively easy. All right? Now, so that would be, these would be nice if you could memorize these, but you don't have to have them. But you are going to use these a lot, so I would recommend memorizing them. All right? These down here, 